Hey, this is a quick tutorial on Final Cut Pro X Multicam workflow, and uh, this is new in version 10.0.3. Uh, I'm going to show you really quick before I get into it what the end result looks like so that you can see how cool it is. Uh, to do that, first I'm going to turn on this thing called the uh, Angle Viewer over here. And uh, what I have here is a music video, uh, and this has roughly um, 31 angles. I'm going to play just a little bit of this, and you can see all of these angles going, and I'll show you how uh, you would be able to do an edit. So I'm hitting play this video. If you see any choppiness here, it's just the um, it's the screen capture. It's not the video itself, because this is playing totally smooth on my laptop. Now, to edit the video, basically you can see these blue uh, outlines changing once in a while. And those are just the angles changing to go with the video. And you can play this, and in real time, if I started clicking on these things, uh, I would change the angles. Uh, so you can very, very quickly edit a lot of angles. Um, put together a really nice looking video really fast. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, let's set up a test project. And I've got all the footage from that video that we just looked at. Okay, so these are all of my uh, clips, and I have a bunch of B-roll, and then all of these MVIs that I didn't rename. Those are all the, the different angles. So the first thing that you're going to need to do, if you haven't done it already, is create proxy media, because the computer will just, uh, unless you're on a supercomputer or unless your footage is uh, low resolution, uh, your computer will not play all of those angles at once. So it's essential that you create proxy and... Uh, the way that you do that, you go to uh, Transcode Media, you, you select the clips, all of your clips, Transcode Media, and you would check this box that says Create Proxy Media. Now, these are not available for me because I've already created the proxy media, but you would be able to select this checkbox and hit OK. So, I've already got the proxy media, and then you have to go into Preferences, and under Playback, say use proxy media and this will while you're editing allow you to use proxy media uh, instead of the original large files and Final Cut Pro is able to play you know a very uh, large number of clips at the same time when it's the proxy media format uh, and then when you're done editing and you're ready to render and all of that stuff you can come back in here and switch back to use original or optimized media so here's my footage uh, the b-roll is not part of my multi-clip what is part of my multi-clip are just all of these uh, MVI uh, files. So you just simply uh, control click on it or right click on it and you say new multicam clip. Now this is going to ask you to name it and then if uh, you're recording on a DSLR and the audio is the same you can say use audio for synchronization. It works sort of like pluralize if you ever had that plugin. It'll do anywhere from a really great job to it just completely won't work at all. But it's worth giving it a try, so you can just leave it and you can just click OK, uh, which is what I'm going to do. And then it's going to create a multi-clip. So here's where it says synchronizing angles, and this will take quite a long time. And in fact, I'm going to cancel this. OK, I've got this new untitled multicam clip. But this, especially since I canceled the synchronization, it's not synced up. The clips are not synced up. So I'm going to say, control click it, open an angle editor. Now we can see, uh, here's all of my clips. Um, I'm going to zoom out, but we can see here, whoa, this is pretty weird. Um, I've got all of this footage, but it's just, you can see these little tiny bits because it's just, it's just way off. I mean, this is, uh, this timeline is 19 minutes long and my video is only three minutes long, so something's not right here. Um, you know, Final Cut was not able to sync up my clips. So what I do is I kind of try to get them all just to start with in the same basic position. When you go to drag these clips, here's the first little gotcha that you may notice. If I try to drag this clip here, it's pretty tiny, uh, it keeps snapping back, so like, what's the deal with that? Well, the reason is because you need to have the position tool and not the select tool. You can just hit the P key or you can select it from there. And you can see that the mouse arrow is a little bit different. Uh, with the position tool, 
that allows you to move these clips. I'm just going to move them all kind of over here so that we can zoom in and see what we're doing and actually get these clips synced. So now we have everything sort of lined up minimally. <clears throat> now, this is something that I personally do when I'm shooting a video. Uh, is I do a slate uh, at the beginning on an iPad. I actually take the music and I put it on an iPad. Uh, my buddy JP at Letter Blue Productions showed me this. Um, and you put time code on there and then it allows you to sync it back up later. Uh, so anyway, we need to sync all of these clips somehow or another. So whatever mechanism it was that you used when you shot to sync them up later, be it uh, a slate, uh, clapperboard, or whatever, um, you need to find, be able to go into each of your clips and find that point you know, that you use for syncing, whatever technique it is that you use. In my case, I use this time code slate. Um, and what I do is I just go one clip at a time. Uh, you click this little TV icon, and that makes it so that you're viewing this clip. Uh, I usually zoom in so I can get a pretty good look at it. Um, in my case, I have time code on here. In yours, you may have a slate or a hand clap or whatever you used, or even a bit of the audio. Uh, so now I can see uh, 15 on my time code. <clears throat> and this is how I do it. I just move the playhead to um, 15, which you can see there, and then I slide this guy over to there. So now this uh, clip, if we move forward, we watch 16, 17. It goes along with uh, my slate. Um, and then I move down to the next clip, click the TV icon. And like I said, you might not have time code, but what you might have is you might have a slate if you hit a slate or you clapped your hands or whatever. Uh, you did to sync your audio with your video. Um, I'm going to just do two of these. Okay, so I've got another one there. I just have it on 10. So I move my playhead to, to 10. Oops, there we go. Line the clip up. There must be some faster way to do this, but I don't know what it is because um, I'm just getting used to Final Cut. Uh, Pro X. I'm not really a believer quite yet. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all of these. Instead, I actually have already uh, I've already uh, done one called uh, Performance Multicam, and I'm going to open that one in the angle editor. And in here, um, oh, I've got this on the more condensed view, but you can change that with this little light switch, so you can look at um, look at the clips like this or so I've, I've done the work with this angle editor. That's the part that takes a while. Inside this angle editor, I've got all these clips so that they're all perfectly in sync with each other. So the next thing that you have to do is drag in your audio, if this is a music video that you're editing. And the way you do that is, I've already got the audio track, but I'll go ahead and add it again just to show you. You just select this down arrow, any one of the tracks, it doesn't matter, and you say add angle. You could, this is where you could delete an angle as well. <clears throat> When you add it, I should see a new angle here at the bottom, and it is my audio is here, and I just drag it down to inside that angle, and then sync it up where it's supposed to start. In my case, I started the audio at um, exactly five seconds, so I already have that track. I'm going to delete this duplicate because we don't need it. Now we need to do one little setup thing before we can get really like rocking with our edit. Uh, so the multicam is all ready to go. I'm going to drag it into my timeline and select it. Now I need to find my audio tracks. The green indicates uh, you can edit the audio and the video separately. The green indicates which audio track is currently playing. The blue indicates which video track is currently playing. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that in a second. But what we need to do, since this is a music video, I don't want the audio changing all the time. I only want the video to change. So I'm going to click this audio button. That means I am now editing audio. I'm going to move over here. My audio track is the last one. I need to hold down the Alt Option key. And you'll see the mouse changes to a finger. I'm going to explain to you what that means in a minute, but for now just yeah, just follow along. Okay, so that's green now. That means the audio is 
the current audio track in this multi-clip. Uh, now I'm going to switch back to blue, telling it that I am only editing video at the moment. If I have it on this, then it means when I um, make these cuts, it's going to cut audio and video both. I don't want that. I just want one audio track to play all the way through, and I want to just cut the different video. So that's what these three things are saying. What What is it that I'm editing in the multi-clip? Right now, this is just one big block. So um, we haven't put any actual edits in it yet. So when I hold on the Alt key, it just changes this whole edit to another clip. And if I don't hold down the Alt key, you can see that the mouse cursor changes to a blade. And when I click it, it makes a cut. And it changes to that new angle. So now if I move the playhead back just before it, and I play, watch over here. And then we'll see the cut that I just did. See, I just put that cut in there. Uh, now, at this cut point, I can go in and I can actually change it around so I can move the location of where the cut happened. There it is. And as I move the uh, playhead back and forth over this cut, you can see there we're on that angle, and here we're on that angle. And if I wanted to change this angle, that's when you hold down the uh, Alt key, and I click this, and now that whole angle has been changed. So, I'm going to watch it again. There we go. So, when you really want to start cranking on this, basically you can just hit play. I'm just going to make some... These are probably terrible cuts, but... Not great cuts, but... Okay. And as I was doing that, it was just making all the cuts, so I really just edited practically in real time this music video. And it took a while to get that angle editor set up and in place, but it pays off because now you can edit so easily, so quickly, playing so many tracks at once. Like I said, this is 32 tracks, well, 31 uh, video tracks and an audio track playing on a laptop. Um, and then, you know, just like we did before with all of these, if I didn't like the way that this um, cut happened, I didn't like the timing of it, see, so yeah, I didn't like that, I can just tweak it a few frames, and let's say, uh, let's find one of these bad cuts. Okay, so that wasn't a very good cut because we went from basically the same angle. So let's say instead of that, uh, I want to kick to the drums, pull down the option key, and I just changed this angle within this little cut. There we go. So, uh, this works just like any other clip, and now I can drag my B-roll even on top of it. Uh, so here's some B-roll of, of an amp. You can just edit in the timeline just like uh, you would anything else. And that's basically it. That's multicam. So I think I've gone through the basics of uh, multicam with a music video. I hope that was informative. If I missed anything or there's anything that's unclear, leave a comment and I'll try to answer it. I'm also going to post a link to this music video for Ignescent uh, once that is done and available online. That's it. All right. Thanks for watching.